What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek. If you're new around here, this channel specifically kind of focuses on the tech side of things. And today, what I wanted to talk to you guys is about a Stream Deck plugin that has been revamped. Uh, I've done a couple videos on this channel before, uh, and I'll try to link them down in the description of like some of my favorite plugins and stuff. And one area that's always been a bit of a sore spot for me has been Discord. So, with that said, uh, Elgato reached out to me about their new plugin, the revamp. Uh, they're calling it Discord 2.0 and asked me to take a look at it. So that's exactly what I have been doing. I've been taking a look at it, I've been messing with it, and then I wanted to jump on, kind of do a little review of it, let you guys know what I think about it and whether it's worth your time or not. I am using the Stream Deck XL. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the actual store. And then on the left, you're gonna wanna click on plugins right here. And you can just do a quick search for Discord and it'll pop up. It's by Elgato. Just for those of you that may have never installed a plugin before with your stream deck. What? Over here on the right side, you'll find it. It'll be under Discord right here. So it won't be under Elgato or anything. It'll be under the name Discord. And then you hit the arrow, you know, to expand it. And when you do, you got all these different options, which is a, what I got laid out here on the actual stream deck that we're gonna go through. So the new revamp does allow you to do a lot of stuff. It's actually really cool. To be honest, I like everything about it except for like one thing. However, that one thing is like pretty fixable. It's it's pretty easy to, to overcome to where I still see myself using this plugin all the time. So I've, I've been using it for a while. I do like it. I like what Elgato does, but I know why they did it. And again, I'll explain that when we get to it. First things first is you have the soundboard. Discord added soundboards inside of Discord channels. So for example, I'm part of a channel called Quarter Machine. You can see they have these different ones. And then if I, you know, select Oh Boy here from Quarter Machine. Now when I hit this button. Oh boy. <laughs> You can see that it comes through the thing. So if we switch it, uh, you know, he, 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 he. <laughs> so these are sounds that are like available to everybody. You don't have to be a part of a server, Discord server for these ones. These are the ones just built into Discord. And most of them are kind of the common ones. So you have like, you know, the quack, the air horn. You got crickets, golf clap. Sad horn and uh, but um, nailed it. So, as you can see, soundboard all that that's what it allows you to do. If you have your own server that has sound, you know, where you can upload your own soundboard sounds and stuff, it's a really cool way to, to throw them in there. The only thing about it is you, you have to be in a voice channel for it to work. I mean, it's a cool feature, I'm glad it's in here, but personally, I already have a soundboard program that I use, and I just have these basically these sounds already downloaded to my computer and that just pulls them from the audio file and plays them. So I don't see me using this too much to be honest, especially since I also use a beacon mix, which allows me to send the sound into my discord to the people I'm chatting to as well. Whereas I guess if you don't have that, this might be more useful because then your stream will hear it, but also the people that you're talking to in discord will hear it. Anyways, you have the standard mute and, and deafen button. These, obviously, you hit the button, you'll see it change here. I'm hitting the button IRL, but you'll see it change. So, you know, now I'm muted, now I'm unmuted, now I'm deafened, undeafened. You also then have, uh, actually, we'll skip to here. So you have push to talk and push to mute. So if you're unmuted, you can use the push to mute. So it's a press to hold. So you have to hold the button, and when you hold it, it'll mute you, as you can see down here in the screen. When I let go, it unmutes. Or if you're muted already, so you have your mic already muted, you can also have right here, push to talk. So then you can just press that and talk and it unmutes. And then when you let go, it remutes you. So you can set it up for, you know, push to mute or push to talk, whichever one you want to do. And then you also have set audio device uh, over here on the right. And set audio device just allows you to set the input, the output, or both. So for example, you could do Let's say when you switch to Discord, you want it to change to, you know, again, I'm using like beacons. When I'm streaming and when I'm recording videos, I use two different OBS instances or, or and I have two different tracks or whatever. So let's say I'm already in like my audience track, which is my typical streaming track. And I want to have it to where it switches my input to a second microphone and it switches it to, to the VOD track, the input and the output to my speakers instead of my headphones, maybe, for example. Uh, I don't really have a, a, a big case for actually doing this. Uh, so I wouldn't use something like this, but I, you know, I know people do want this 
feature and and do use this feature but for me i don't really ever need to switch anything because again i'm using a beacon mix crate already notifications so you can get your it displays how many notifications you have in your discord you know i know a lot of people stream and they only stream on one monitor people like me we take it for granted that i have like multiple monitors set up here that i can constantly be looking at all the information coming in for my live streams and stuff there's still a lot of people that stream on only one monitor or they might only have one side monitor and they have you know everything else open spotify discord youtube music you know just whatever apps that they're using obs all of that stuff you know it's nice to know if something pops up like you're getting a dm or something like that uh, so this is just the notifications button it's nice when you get it or whatever like i said before i go into these volume controls let me jump back to basically these server specific ones which is voice channel text channel and then server stats so what voice channel does is it allows you to select a server out of any server that you're currently, you know, joined. And then it allows you to select a voice channel that when you press this button, so you can see here, this will take me to the general voice channel. Right now you can see I'm in private channel. When I hit this button, boom, it pops me into the general. Then if I hit it again, it disconnects me. And you can see, you can have the icon be dynamic or static. The other one is just the same thing, but with text channels. So it'll put me like in the general text command. So let's say like I'm over here in memes. I need to go to my general text channel. Boom, I hit this, automatically switches me. So this would be useful if you have like, for example, when I'm live streaming, I'm typically in the general text channel because that's where most messages in my server comes through while I'm live streaming. There's also the media share channel, as you can see here, which I also have to jump into quite a bit on stream because of people sharing YouTube videos and stuff. And because I do have a second and a third monitor, I can have it on one of the extra monitors and just glance over, see it, boom, hit, go back to my general, and then I'm back to gaming or whatever. Same with voice channels. Sometimes I like to be in a private channel or a streaming channel, I call it. Uh, this is just a channel that when I'm streaming that, that most users can't join. Uh, but then I also have the general channels where everybody can join. And sometimes on live streams, I like to jump into that and just let anybody who wants to join in and chit chat. Uh, so again, it's just easy to do that instead of having to actually alt tab out of a game or something to switch stuff. So just, you know, kind of a useful thing here or there. What I've found myself doing with a lot of these uh, Stream Deck plugins as they've been coming out, if I kind of organize it by applications, uh, it tends to make things more accessible and it still allows me to leave a lot of those rarely used but useful when needed icons and stuff still on the stream deck. All right, last thing I wanna talk about with the plugin, this is the only thing I don't love about the plugin and I know why they did it. This is the user volume control and volume control. So volume control is pretty easy. I don't have an issue with this one. All this allows you to do is you can select your output or input device, meaning like your microphone or your headphones. You know, headphones would be output, microphone would be input. And then you can have adjust and have it do step sizes, meaning like every time you hit the button, it goes up 1%. And then maybe you have another one and every time you hit the button, so it's like, see, now it changed to a minus. So you can have two of these. And so when you hit one, it makes, it jumps it up, you know, like 5% each time you hit the plus button. If you hit the minus button, it drops it 5% every time you hit it. Or you can set it to just set and you can set it like, you know, have it set to 100% volume or have it set to 50% volume. Typically, I find myself using the adjust and adjusting by 5% or minus 5%. And then I'll just have one set up for each of my outputs because, again, I'm using a beacon. So, again, no issues with the volume control one. But the user volume control, what this allows you to do is when you're in a server and you have to, there has to be other people in the server with you for it to work. But when you are in a actual voice channel, any users in that channel with you will be on this list and you can select them. So let's say you have three friends that you game with a lot. You could set up three of these. Uh, let me just move these out of my way for a minute. You could set up like three of these. And you could like when they're in one time, when all of you guys are in, you can set one to each of the people. And then that way, each time they come, you don't have to change it. It'll still be there. It'll pers persist through. But the issue is like you, every time there's a new person, you have to add them in, in order to individually control their volume or whatever, which Again, it's nice that this feature's in here because the other option, which I like better, is this Discord plugin called Discord Volume Mixer. What it does is I'm in a voice channel. When I hit the Discord button, it opens up this and it has a mute and a deafen. And then anybody in the chat with me automatically gets displayed. But where you see nobody in voice chat, Whenever, let's say there's four people, one, two, three, four, all four of those people will pop up here and above their name will be a plus icon and below their name will be a minus icon. And you just hit the plus or minus. You got a picture 
like their profile picture pops up in the square here where it says nobody in voice chat. So you know exactly who you're turning up and down uh, and it automatically does it. The issue is in order to use this, you have to set up a uh, developer account with Discord, which is free and it's not very hard to do, but it is a little bit of work and you have to create uh, like an app key, basically a, a auth key, um, you know, so that you can access their platform in order to use that ability for it to auto detect the people in your chat room, in the voice chat with you, and then display them. Whereas with the Elgato one, you don't have to do any of that. You just have to manually set each of those different ones. But I just like how this one is set up and how clean it looks and with the profile pictures and everything versus the Elgato one. Again, I get why they did it because then people don't have to mess with that developer account. I'm sure, especially, you know, since most of the time you're in a game with the same people, this probably is the smarter choice. And maybe it's just a case of I'm used to the other one by now and, and I just like how it functions. But nonetheless, I think Elgato out did themselves with this plugin, uh, with the revamp of it. Like I said, I was already using it. Uh, now, you know, I see myself using it even more. Well done, Elgato, well done. Again, if you have it, check it out, check the revamp. If you use it in the past, it'll be worth going back and taking a look at it again because they added quite a bit of features and stuff. Do those help you guys out? Would you guys like to see more type of this content? If so, let me know down in the description below uh, and then I'll keep it coming. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time, peace out everybody. Later nerds.